How to get edible plants if the world is dead, your stomach is screaming, and all the grocery stores are just empty, silent monuments to consumerism. So the canned goods ran out, huh? Or maybe that last squirrel gave you the stink eye and bolted. Whatever. Your stomach thinks it's the bottomless pit, and frankly, who can blame it? Time to make like a deer and graze. But not just any graze, unless you fancy a one-way trip to meet your ancestors. We're talking edible plants, because poison is not on the menu. Before we continue, check out the link in bio and register to support our channel. First, you need to remember the golden rule. If you don't know it, don't eat it. Seriously, you're not in a five-star restaurant. There's no Yelp for post-apocalyptic foraging. Start by finding dandelions. Yeah, those yellow annoyances. Leaves are bitter, but edible. The roots? Roast them. Flowers? Salad. It's like nature's multivitamin, if nature was a little less... stabby. Next, look for plantain. Not the banana kind, you idiot. The broadleaf kind, growing in cracks and disturbed ground. Chew the leaves. Great for cuts, too, if you're into that whole natural first aid thing. Bonus points if you find clover. White or red, both are technically edible, though they taste like, well, clover. Don't go making a meal of it, but it'll keep you from gnawing on your arm. The science here is simple. You're looking for common, easily identifiable plants that aren't trying to kill you. Look for patterns, familiar shapes. If it looks like something a witch would brew, or if it has weird milky sap, or if it makes your skin tingle just by touching it, leave it alone. You don't need a side of neurotoxin with your survival meal. The payoff? You don't starve. Yet.